Hi everyone, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. Uh, in this video, uh, I would be talking about sequential search algorithm. Uh, so the items for discussion is a sequential search introduction. Then we will be looking at two examples uh, of sequential search. One is algorithm one, which will be a normal algorithm. Then another algorithm for optimized uh, sequential search. And then we will actually look at the four different algorithms for sequential search. And then we will uh, do a time complexity analysis for sequential search. Mm. Now, uh, uh, when I when I was thinking about sequential search, I was actually wondering, should I really make a video out of sequential search? Because it's one of the probably most easiest way of uh, doing a search. Then I, I thought, why not? Let's let's make a video of sequential search as well. After all, it's one of the brute force way of uh, doing uh, search uh, uh, searching an element and sequential search is also called a linear search because of the way it searches elements so now let's uh, look at some of the examples uh, now uh, let's look at uh, an example for the algorithm one which is a normal algorithm and an example for algorithm two which happens to be an optimized algorithm now in the normal uh, normal algorithm let's assume we have the following numbers and I am actually trying to search 90. So the algorithm uh, uh, does the following. First, it will search 90 with the first element. If it doesn't match, then it will search 90 with the second element. Then if it doesn't match, it will search 90 with the third element. And then if it doesn't match, it, it checks with the next element. And, so it is, and since it is found, we uh, say that the uh, element has been found. So uh, sequential search or linear search searches linearly through all the elements. Now a small uh, uh, small addition or small improvisation of the algorithm is to add the element that you are searching at the end of the list. So then what we do is uh, we start searching for the element right from the first element and we say check whether the element is found. If not, go ahead. If not, go ahead and keep searching for the element and then ultimately you would actually end up finding the element at the end position and if you have reached the end of the list and you have found the element it's as good as we can say that the, we have not found the element so this is another way of uh, of, uh, of doing uh, a search by adding the search element at the end the advantage is uh, you uh, you will see in the algorithm that you save one comparison so by adding the element at the end you would save uh, checking the uh, element uh, one comparison of uh, checking so we will actually see this when we look at the algorithm for both of them so here are the uh, two algorithms uh, for uh, sequential search uh, one is the normal algorithm and the other is the optimized algorithm so in the normal algorithm you take the list of elements that you have and key represents the key that you are trying to search you set i is equal to one then we check whether i has reached the end of the list and we have found out the key if uh, we have not reached the end of the list and we have not found the key increment i to indicate that we are searching the next element with the key so this process will continue as long as we have uh, we have reached we have not reached the end of the list and we have not found the element so if either of the cases is false, we will come out of the while loop and if the value of i is less than n, that means we have actually figured out the position of the key. So we will return the position of the element. If i is not less than n, that means we have actually reached the end of the list and we still don't have the element. So if that is the case, then we return minus one to indicate that we have not found the element. This is the normal algorithm. Now the optimized algorithm again takes two parameters. One is the array, which has all the elements and key represents the key that we are trying to search. So here you will see that we have added the key to the end of the list and we start with i equal to zero. Here you see that we only check whether the element matches the key. You don't really have to check whether i has reached the end of the list because if the element is not present in the list, it would actually figure out that the last element is the key. So you, either way, you will actually hit this scenario sometime. I, if, if the element is present in the list, then I value would be much less than N. 
if uh, you have hit the end of the list then your key value has been added at the end which will match and you will come out so if i is less than n that means the element was present in the list else if i equal to n which means you have add whatever element you had added at the end is actually the key then it means you have not found the element so the advantage compared to this normal algorithm and optimized algorithm is in this while loop you will see that in this while loop you just have one comparison whereas in this while loop i also need to check whether i is less than n and e of i is not equal to key because i added the element at the end of the list i need not check whether i is less than n only this checking suffices now uh, there is an e recursive way of solving sequential search as well so it takes the list that is the array of elements the key that you are searching and an index of the current element which is being searched so if the list is empty that means return null uh, this could be a scenario where the array is uh, empty so this is an error scenario else if the key matches the first element of the list that means you have figured out they send the index value else you call recursively linear search you pass the value value which is actually should be uh, the 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 key that you are trying to search the leftover list so accept the first element start from second element and increment the index so linear search recursively gets called you will uh, pass the list the key that you are searching and this list will not contain the first element you will contain a list from second to n elements the key that you are searching and index will represent two so again you will search now since the second element you are you are checking so the key will be checked with the second element which happens to be list of zero in this case if it matches that means pass the index else you again in you remove the second element and your list will be a leftover list which is nothing but third to nth element and the val the value is the what the key that you are searching and index plus 1 to in indicate that you are at the third element and so on so finally if you find the element you will return key else you will return an error value so this is the recursive way of doing it then sequential search is also used for linked list so in linked list you will have a pointer to the list and the key that you are searching so check if this is to check if the key is the first element in the linked list so if it is the first element in the linked list it will match and you return true else you set set a flag and you uh, add one pointer which points to the same list until you reach the end of the list you keep checking for the value so if the value matches then that means you have found the element else you move to the next element and keep checking so if you reach the end of the list that is temp is not equal to null then flag would not have been set flag would be false which means you have not found the element now let's uh, try to analyze the time complexity of sequential search uh, there could be three scenarios one is a best case one is a worst case and one is the average case so in the best case you actually figure out that the element that you are trying to search is the first element in the list for example i have this list of numbers 5 4 7 3 9 and 1 and i am actually trying to find whether phi is present in the list so when i start from the first element phi actually matches the first element and hence i have found the element in my first iteration itself so my complexity is actually theta of 1 now worst case scenario there could be two worst case scenarios one is you have the element say 5 4 7 3 9 and 1 and you are actually trying to find the last element or an element which does not belong to the list so you have to sequentially go through the complete list to figure out that this is the last element or it actually does not exist in the list in which case we have checked all the n elements hence the complex complexity will be theta of n in average case we do about n into n, sorry we do about n plus 1 by 2 average comparisons so sequential search on on worst case gives a complexity of theta of n So this was all about sequential search thanks for watching this video